Okay, we're gonna start new section uh, now, uh, section 2.8, which is about corp sketching. So, um, so what we're gonna do here in this section is that um, when we are given a function, we use the power of calculus to sketch the graph of the function. Basically, we follow this four step method, okay? First, we will analyze the given function f of x, which means we'll find the domain of the function, we'll look at the domain, we'll find x and y intercept, and we'll look at the asymptote if there is any, basically vertical and horizontal asymptote. There may be some slanting asymptote, but we'll talk about that later. And we'll focus our attention on these two kinds of attention um, in today's class, okay? So we'll find that asymptote. So these steps are basically a high school step. I believe you have done that in high school. And we quickly review it and then uh, work and, and find out those uh, information, okay? And uh, step two, what we're gonna do is we'll analyze the derivative, first derivative, f prime of x. We know that first derivative gives us a lot of information about the about the graph of a function. So here we will find the critical number and then we will find where the function is increasing, you know, the interval for increasing and decreasing, where the function is decreasing. We'll find that. And we'll find a relative minimum and maximum as well. And in step three, we'll look at, uh, we'll analyze the second derivative of the function and uh, second derivative tells us about the concavity of the graph. Remember that we have done in the previous class. So we know that if the second derivative is positive, then it's concave up, right? And if the second derivative is negative, then it gives us, it tells us that the graph is concave down on that certain interval. We know that. So we're gonna use this to figure out the shape of the graph and finally, we use all the information to draw the graph, to sketch the graph. That's it. So let's look at example one. So probably we'll try, we'll work example one and three together. And then you will try example two on your own just for fun, okay? So first example one. Let me just copy the function given f of x is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1. Now, step one or, or uh, you know, um, in part A, we need to find the domain x and y intercept and asymptote. So first of all, let us find um, domain. And you know the domain of a polynomial function is always negative infinity to infinity, or you can say all real numbers. But I suggest, uh, you know, write down the domain in interval notation because there is a reason. If you write the domain in interval notation, it uh, makes your life easy when we draw the graph, okay? So I suggest you write down, instead of writing all real number, uh, I suggest you write this negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. Now, y intercept. Let us find y-intercept. So how do we find the y-intercept? Remember, if you want to find the y-intercept, basically what you need to do is recall from your high school in y-intercept, x value is zero, right? In y-intercept, x value is zero. No matter what uh, point you consider in the y-axis, x value is always zero. So we use that fact. So set x equal to zero, and find and find f of zero. So, which means um, in this case, when x equal to zero y means our f of zero is going to be 
zero cube minus six times zero squared plus nine times zero plus one, which is actually one. So the point is zero and one. That is the y intercept. All right, now let us find x intercept. In the same way in x intercept to find the x intercept, the hint is that on the x axis, y value is zero by the same token. Okay, so set y or f of x equal to zero and solve and solve for x. So that means when f of x equal to zero, what that means is x cubed minus uh, 6x squared plus 9x plus 1 equal to 0. And you just solve it, okay? Now, solving, solve for x. I leave it to you. I think you can solve it by yourself and let's see. And asymptote. So there is no asymptote for polynomial function, okay? No asymptote for polynomial function. And we'll talk about the asymptote in more detail when we are working uh, example three, okay? So more detail uh, uh, discussion about asymptote, we'll do that in example three. So at this, at this point, just remember, and I think you have done that in your high school or pre-calculus, that polynomial function do not have asymptote. Only the rational function like example three, they have asymptote and we'll talk about that later. Part B. Part B, we need to find, look at that. Find the critical numbers interval where the function is increasing or decreasing and also find the relative extrema. So you already know how to find the critical number, okay? So for critical number, this is actually combining all the things, all the skill that you have learned in this class so far, actually. So for critical number, We know that f prime of x equal to zero or f prime of x undefined. So this means f prime of x is zero. So we already have the derivative, which is our derivative we have not. Okay, let us calculate the derivative here. So the derivative of the function f prime of x is uh, 3x squared minus uh, 12 x plus nine, okay? So that means 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equal to 0, or you can write x squared minus 4x plus 3 equal to 0. And if you simplify it, it's going to give you x minus 3 and x minus 1 equal to 0. And that's going to give you x equals to 3 and 1. Okay, that is the critical number. Now we need to find the interval where the function is increasing and decreasing. So for which you may want to draw the number line and you plot those points one and three. This is negative infinitive and infinitive testing point. X equals in the first interval, which is negative infinitive to one, you can choose zero, as, which is the easiest number to deal with. Okay, I think you already know that you can choose any number between negative infinitive and one. You can choose minus 57,231.57. Make your life easy. Choose the easy number, okay? So testing point is x equal to zero in the first interval and uh, maybe two in the second interval and uh, four in the third interval. Okay, so let me just copy the derivative, which is, um, 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And let us plot those values. When x equal to 0, it's going to give me 3, 0 squared minus 12 times 0 plus 9, which is actually uh, 9, right? It's positive. 
And when this means, this one is positive means increasing. So let us try with two. When I plug in two, you're gonna get, which is a negative. Okay, this guy is negative. And if I plug in um, four, three times four squared minus 12 times four plus nine, and that will be positive. Okay, so we notice that increasing, f of x is increasing on the interval negative infinity to one and three to infinity. And the function is decreasing on the interval one and three, okay? And we already know that critical numbers are or points x equals three and one, we already found that. And these are the increasing and decreasing interval. And we need to find the minimum and maximum maximum as well. As you know that when you analyze the sign, so for, you know, at one, x equal one, the graph is increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. So as you can see, we have maximum there. And at three, x equals to three, the graph is decreasing on the left hand side and then increasing on the right hand side, therefore you have minimum there. So, so we notice that maximum at x equals one and maximum value equals f of one, you plug in that in the original function and minimum at x equals three and minimum value f of three. So you can plug in those values there. So when you plug in f equals one, um, then what do you get? So that will be one cube minus six, one square plus nine times one plus one, that's gonna give me five. So I have uh, one and five, that is the maximum. And minimum value will be three cube minus six times three squared plus nine times three plus one. That gives me one so three and one which is minimum okay so we found maximum and minimum as well part b is done now let's look at part c Okay, so here, what we found is that in part C, we already found that the second derivative is six X minus 12. And then the IP we found is, you know, by solving this, we got X equals two. And when X equal two, Y equals three. And uh, to find the concavity, uh, we plot that IP in the number line. And then we test, we, we choose the testing point from each of these interval from negative infinity to two, we choose x equal to zero and two to infinity, we choose three. And then we plug in those values in the second derivative. Uh, and when we plug in x equal to zero in the second derivative, we got negative, that means concave down. And when we plug in x equals to three in the second derivative, we got positive, which means concave up. So we have concave down on negative infinity to two to to infinity. So we have lots of information already. Okay, we have the, in part C, we got the inflection point and concave up and down interval. In part B, 
we got the uh, critical points, we got the increasing and decreasing interval, and we got the maximum and minimum value as well. Okay, in part A, we got the domain, we got the y-intercept, and I told you to find the x-intercept. I'm waiting for that, guys. Can somebody tell me what is the x-intercept solving this equation? So you are, you guys are telling me that this one is difficult to solve. Okay, difficult to solve. Skip it then. Okay, if it is too difficult to solve, skip it at this time. As a matter of fact, um, you will learn how to solve any kind of equation later in this course. Right now, we have not done. This one is not the simple factorization uh, problem that you have done in high school or in pre-calculus. It requires a little bit um, different method to solve. And uh, we will learn that later, okay, in this course. So in this course, I will teach you how to solve this equation. Not only this, you'll find it so easy. Even if somebody gives you equation like, you know, x power five over three plus three x power three square root x plus ln x square plus one plus e raised to power x um, equals zero, then you can solve these kind of equation as well. I'll teach you that, okay? At this moment, uh, let us just skip. And even if we skip one information, I think we'll be able to sketch the curve, okay? Let's see, part D. In part D, what we are supposed to do is using above information is case the graph, okay. So it's getting curve. It's getting the graph using above information. All right. So sometimes in the test, the graph paper will be given, I mean, graph will be provided, but most of the time you will not be provided graph, okay? I, I, I don't provide you the graph paper. What you can do is you can make a graph by yourself. Just draw like this. This is the graph paper, X and Y. All right, now all the important information I have just noted it down. So the first one, the first information that I noted it down is y-intercept is this, zero and one. But you know, if there is any asymptote, then I suggest you begin with the asymptote. Uh, but in this case, there is no asymptote. So I just want to plot this point, zero and one. That is my y-intercept, zero and one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, zero and one is right there. This is the point. Okay, zero and one, y-intercept. Next, what are the other points that we know? And x-intercept, we, we said that it is a little bit difficult to solve and we skip it. Uh, asymptote, there is no asymptote. Okay, no problem. And another point is maximum and minimum. As you can see here, we already know the maximum and minimum point. Maximum is one and five. So let me plot that point, one and five. X is one, Y is one, two, three, four, five, right there. This is the point. This is maximum, remember? It is one and five, it is maximum point. By the nature of maximum, that means the graph must be must have the maximum point there. So the shape of the graph at this point will be like that. So I just want to draw like that, okay? Because this is maximum. So by definition, that's the shape of the graph at that point. All right. 
And then we also know the minimum value. So minimum is three and one. So let me draw three and one, where is that? One, two, three and one right there. So this is my minimum point, okay? This is minimum, which means the shape of the graph should be like this. Remember minimum means this is the minimum point, okay? So this is your minimum here. which is uh, three and one. And we also know another point, which is two and three. So two and three is right there. So this is your IP. It is IP, which is two and three. Now I think you can just join the graph and then you see the graph, okay? You have already drawn the graph kind of. Let me join this, all the points. Okay, now let's check whether our graph actually makes sense or not. We said that the graph should be increasing on the interval negative infinity to one and three and infinity. So let us verify whether this graph actually is the correct one or not. So it should be increasing on the interval negative infinity between one and three and infinity. So you see the graph is increasing from negative infinity to one. As you can see, this is one. All right, so increasing. And then we say that it's also increasing from three to infinity. As you can see, the graph is increasing from three to infinity, that makes sense. And we say that the graph is decreasing from one to three. Okay, the graph is decreasing from one to three on this part, as you can see clearly. You see the graph is decreasing from here to there all the way. And we also say that the graph is concave down on the interval negative infinity to two. So negative infinity to two, the graph is concave down. You can see clearly that the graph is concave down on this side and from two to infinity, the graph is concave up. So it makes sense as well. So this is the graph that uh, for the function, um, which is f of x equals uh, whatever that is, you know, we begin with the All right, that's how we draw the graph for the polynomial function. And now we will look into the, uh, how to sketch the curve for a rational function. All right, so example two. So example three is a rational function, which is uh, f of x equals x squared plus one over x squared minus nine. And we need to find, recall from the previous example that we need first derivative and second derivative. So first derivative using the product, I mean the, the quotient rule, you can find it out. What is your first derivative? And I trust you guys that you can actually find the first and second derivative. And the first derivative will be this one. I'm using my calculator that gives me first derivative is this. Minus 20 X over X squared minus nine squared. And my calculator gives me the second derivative is um, okay, just give me one second. 60 X square plus 180 divided by X square minus nine cube. Okay, so um, yeah, so using the quotient rule, that's what we get, first and second derivative. Now part A, we need to find the domain. So domain of f of x is all the real number except positive and negative three, right? Because x squared minus nine cannot be zero. So the domain is all real number except x squared minus nine is not equal to zero. That means x is not equal to positive and 
negative three. So that means it is all the real number except negative three and three. So these two points cannot be included and everything else is included. So the domain is Uh, negative infinity to negative three and negative three to three and three to infinity. So this is the domain. All right. Um, now, second part is X intercept. We already know that for X intercept, you set Y equal to zero. Okay, set y equal to y or f of x equal to zero and solve. That's the hint. So that means f of x equal to zero. That means x squared plus one over x squared minus nine equal to zero because the denominator cannot be zero. So we'll have x squared plus one equal to zero, which is, what is the value for this one? Well, it's not a real number, right? So it's not a real number. We got x squared equals negative one. That's not a real number, not a real number. All right. Now let's find y intercept. In y intercept, set x equal to zero and find f of zero. So f of zero is going to be, if you plug in zero there, so you're gonna get zero squared plus one over zero squared minus nine, which gives me one over nine. And so that is, um, and we got zero and one over nine, negative though. Okay, negative one over nine. That's our uh, y intercept. All right. And uh, let's see. Next, we need to find the asymptote. Remember the, the rational functions have asymptote and two kinds of asymptote may exist. So one is horizontal asymptotes and another is vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. And from now onwards, I simply write HA for horizontal asymptote and VA for vertical asymptote in short, okay? And remember how we've, I think we discussed this in our, um, you know, in our last, I mean, at the beginning of the class when we are talking about limit. Now let's go back to the, back to the instruction. What is there? How do we find asymptote? Look at this. There is the information given. For vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero and solve for X. For horizontal asymptote, this is Y equals limit X tends to infinity F of X. So these are the things that you need to uh, remember. So now, okay, for horizontal asymptote, we know that y equals limit x tends to infinity f of x gives us the uh, horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptote means denominator, set denominator equal to zero. Set denominator equal to zero. This is basically high school stuff, guys. If you forget, then this is the right time to recall. So the denominator is x squared minus nine equal to zero gives me x equals plus minus three. That is the vertical asymptote. And here we have y equals limit x tends to infinity x squared plus one over x squared minus nine. And you can solve this by different method, but you already know how to evaluate the limit. I think when the limit x tends to infinity, the easiest method is forget the little one method that we discussed, okay? Forget the little one, which is equivalent to limit x tends to infinity. Recall, you know, call the, uh, the leading term from the top, which is x squared, and the leading term in the bottom, which is also x squared. 
So that's going to give you one. So your horizontal asymptote is y equals one. That's all you need to know. Okay, asymptote is done. Now part B, we need to find the critical number and uh, and then the um, you know where the function is increasing and decreasing. So basically, we analyze the um, second derivative. Okay, so for critical number. f prime of x equal to zero or f prime of x is undefined. We know that. So this part f prime of x equal to zero. So f prime is actually, let me just copy the derivative here. Okay, guys. So part B, let me just copy the derivative f prime of x is, uh, which is negative 20 x negative 20 x divided by x square minus nine whole square. So that is the derivative. So it means negative 20 x equal to zero. And this side is x square minus nine whole square equal to zero. So this is gonna give me zero and this is gonna give me x square minus nine equal to zero, which is x equals to plus minus three. So the critical number are notice that x equals to plus minus three that is not in the domain okay this is not in domain so critical numbers are, is only critical number is x equals zero However, to find the increasing and decreasing interval, when you draw the number line, I think you can take this, you can do it by yourself, okay? So we have, let me draw the number line. So here we have negative, we consider this negative three, zero and three, negative infinity and infinity. So the testing point x equals on on the first interval you can choose negative four and the second interval maybe negative one and then one and then maybe four so we'll test those in the derivative so derivative is negative 20x over x squared minus nine whole square so f prime of when i plug in negative four you're gonna get, remember here, negative 20, x is negative four. So if you have negative 20 and x is negative four, negative, negative will be positive. And the bottom part is always, always non-negative because of the square, okay? It will be always positive, the bottom part. So the sign will be positive there. And if you, test the negative one there. So if you substitute negative one for x here for the derivative function, you will get negative 20 times negative one, which will be positive. The bottom part, you don't have to care about because this is always positive. Okay, so this one is positive. So that means this is also positive. Now, if you plug in F one, that will be negative and f4 is also negative so we have this negative and negative and now we notice that increasing the function is increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 3 and then negative 3 to 0 and decreasing on decreasing on the interval zero to three and three to infinity. All right. And now notice that see at negative three, I mean the critical point is zero only. So at zero, whether we have maximum or minimum, 
So you see the graph is going up, increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. So we have maximum. So the maximum at x equal to zero and the maximum value is maximum value y equals f of zero equals zero. Substitute this value in the original function, which will be zero square plus one over zero, zero square minus nine, which gives me negative one over nine. So the maximum value is maximum at um, x is zero and y is negative one over nine. Okay, part C is, is part B is done. Now part C, we need to find IP. Let me just copy the second derivative. I'm gonna do, uh, you know, quickly here because we are almost running out of time. The second derivative is going to be, I mean, second derivative, let me copy that. So we already found the second derivative, which is 60 x squared plus 180 divided by x squared minus nine uh, cube. All right, and then now to find the IP, IP, we know that the second derivative equal to zero or second derivative is undefined. So this means 60 x squared plus 180 equal to zero. This means x squared minus nine cube equal to zero. So this gives me x squared minus nine equal to zero, which is x equals plus minus three, but this is not in the domain, not in domain, keep that in mind. Now this side, we got x squared equals minus three. So this is not a real number, not a real number. So what we notice here is that there is no IP, okay? So no IP, but we need to find the concavity. So let us quickly look at the concavity. So for concavity, draw a number line. And even though this negative three and positive three is not in the domain, but sometimes the, the graph may change its concavity. So therefore we just plug in those points there and now we test. So testing point is x equals uh, negative four on that side and uh, zero on the middle and then the last one will be four. So let us check those. Let me just copy the second derivative which is 60 x squared plus 180 over x squared minus nine q. So uh, if you plug in this second derivative and x is negative four, recall that the top part is always positive because 60 x squared, x squared is positive. So the top part is always positive. The sign will be determined by the bottom part only. So if I plug in negative four there, so you're gonna get negative four squared minus nine Q. So which is negative four square is 16 minus nine is positive cube is positive. So this guy is positive here. In the same way, if I plug in the uh, zero there and so the bottom part one, we check for the bottom part, zero square is zero minus nine is negative, negative Q is negative. So this is negative. And then when I plug in the uh, four there, Okay, so if I plug in four, then what happens? Uh, so four squared is 16 minus nine positive, cube is positive, so this guy is positive. So we notice that the function is concave uh, up on the interval negative infinitive to negative three, and then three to infinitive, and concave down on the interval negative three and three. So in part D, uh, sketching the curve, is sketching the curve using all the information. So generally, 
Okay, let me just draw the graph here. Okay, so first of all, I generally I, I draw the graph beginning with the asymptote if there is any, all right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the horizontal asymptote is uh, y equals one from part A, y equals one horizontal asymptote. Let me draw that asymptote here. So generally asymptote is drawn using the dotted line, okay? So this is horizontal asymptote, y equals one. Vertical asymptote is x equals three and negative three. So, so vertical asymptote is three, right there, negative three. This is negative three. And this is positive three. So these are the vertical asymptote. So this one is X equals three and this one is X equals negative three. All right, so we draw the asymptote. Now, uh, if there is any X or Y intercept, we draw that. So X intercept is, um, I believe it is, uh, uh, there is no x intercept, but the y intercept is negative one over nine. Okay, so negative one over nine is somewhere here. This one is your y intercept, negative one, negative one, I mean, sorry, one, sorry, zero and one over negative one over nine, zero and negative one over nine, that's the point. And uh, now part a, all the information we already put it in here. And we're gonna put the information from part B. In part B, relative maximum is zero and negative one over nine. So this is the maximum point we notice from part B. So by definition, maximum is the shape of the graph will be like this. Okay, so this is the shape of the graph. That's the maximum uh, value here and there is no minimum point. And um, okay, I think all the points that, and there is no IP. So this is the only information we got so far. Now, how do we draw the graph? Now, you can extend this by the definition of asymptote. So this will graph will come all the way near to the line here and all the way near to that one. So it goes like this. So this part is done. Now, what happens on this side, this side and this side? So how, how, how do we draw that? Now, notice that what we said is that the graph is um, concave up from negative infinity to negative three. So the graph is concave up on this side. Okay, the graph is concave up here. That's what we said in part D. And this side also we said concave up on this side. Oh, not sorry, not here, here. This side from three to infinity, it is concave up, all right? Or you can think this way, the graph is increasing. The graph is increasing from negative infinity to three, negative three. So you can think that way too. And the graph is decreasing from uh, three to infinity, you can think this way too, decreasing. So this is the shape of the graph. And in our next class, we'll continue one of similar question. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so this is what we are supposed to do. Uh, we'll try one or two questions just for fun in our next class.